Welcome to the Business of Being You podcast. My name is Marco Benitez, also known as Coach Marco B. I'm an authenticity coach. And today in season two, episode two of our podcast, we're having a conversation with William Clanton. William is a business advisor who specializes in accounting. He's also a writer, speaker, and teaches small business owners and professionals how to transform their life by transforming their business. His specialties include tax planning, management consulting, technology consulting, and business leadership. He has over 20 years of experience, and we're going to have a wonderful conversation today about authenticity in business. And so without further ado, welcome Will Clanton. Thanks so much for having me on the the podcast, Uh, Marco. I'm excited to share with your community. Excellent, man. Thanks. So I read something interesting about you. You started doing taxes at a really young age. Tell me about that story. Oh, man. Uh, Yeah. So I'm 16 years old. I'm at home. Um, I'm bored out of my mind. And, you know, I'm curious and, you know, not like today, but every year the IRS used to send these tax books in the mail. And those tax books used to have the forms in there to complete your tax return. And I get a hold of one of those books, and I'm absolutely desperate to do a tax return, and I kind of need a victim to practice on. And I remember going, searching all over my house, looking through all my mom's pocketbooks to find her W-2s to do that tax return. <laughs> um, I finally, you know, find her W-2s. I do that tax return by hand, and my mom breaks my heart. Still scarred from that from life, Marco, right? <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't take that tax return that I completed and just send it to the IRS. Right. She didn't trust me. She went to the same account she went to every year. Uh, but when she came home, the same refund that that accountant actually calculated, her 16-year-old son calculated. Wow. So me, I kind of got my, my start in being a nonprofit and doing tax returns for the neighborhood and not getting paid any money. So Really? <laughs> That's an awesome story, man. That's great. Wow. There's not many 16-year-olds I know that when they're bored decide, hey, let me just try my hand at taxes. <laughs> you, you, you're absolutely right. And I don't even I don't even know why, man. It was there. I had nothing to do. And I guess it just was a challenge. I was like, hey, let me see if I can actually do this. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I really got started. Did you grow up in a household where there was a lot of business people or entrepreneurs? No. Not at all, man. Um, my mom worked for a company, you know, every day and every day of her life. Uh, so no, I, I just think I was introduced to it by the activities that I engaged with, you know, growing up. Right. So today's topic is authenticity in business, and I just want to start with something basic. Let's just get a um, a feel for how do you define authenticity. Man, that that that's such that's such a great question. Um, I think when I define authenticity, I'm thinking about it from from being in alignment, right, of what you want out of life, um, and then showing up to actually uh, create what you say you want. I think a lot of people tend to not be authentic because what they're doing is not in a line of what are their core values. Or possibly it's not where they have their strengths. And whenever I'd, I'm operating in a place that's not my strengths or it's it's impacting my values that I have, I think I'm not showing up to be authentic. Right, right. How, how important is authenticity in business, in your opinion? Because you deal with a lot of people who either want to start their business or have started already, but they feel like their business is going off the rails. Do you find that there's an importance or a correlation, rather, between authenticity and successful businesses? Marco, it's impossible to build a business without being authentic. And the word I want to stress there is build, right? I can start a business and be stagnant, or I can start a business... Um, and have a business, but if I'm going to build something that's going to be sustainable, if I'm not going to be authentic, it is not going to last. Or I can't build because my foundation has to be authentic. And when I I think about that, and when you say that, when I think about authentic and you think about business, it's about conversations. So if business is about conversations and I need to have conversations with my team, 
I need to have conversations with vendors. I need to have conversations with prospects. I need to have conversations with my clients. I need to have conversations with my partners. If I'm not authentic in those interactions, then what do I really have? Because business is relationships. And I believe that the relationship is the conversation. Right, right. Yeah, and, and, and I, I, I would agree with what you said. I think the one word that I would add to what you said is thriving. Because <sighs> you can start a business without yeah. authenticity. But if you want a thriving business, if you want it to last, I agree. It is impossible. Um, I don't have a business background. My background was in, in medicine. And I had just a couple of really good ideas uh, that I ran with. And they became businesses and and you know, I made some money on them. Um, my heart was not into them after a while. They became very logical, very mental choices. I would rationalize it. This yeah. makes sense. I can do this. I can repeat this process and I can continue to generate income. But it's the passion and the authenticity I find that give you the staying power. Because without that, when the hard times come, either the business is going to fail the way you treat employees, if you have employees, that's going to start to manifest itself in your interactions with them, or you're going to do what I did and simply just let it fade away and let it go away and move on to something different. Uh, but businesses oftentimes are an extension, a manifestation, a, a different expression of who we are. And that's one of the things that I speak with people about when uh, they're small business owners and they want to speak with me about authenticity, I asked them a simple question. I said, is your business an extension of yourself? Is your business something that you do? Or is your business something that means something deep to you, but it is separate from your own personal beliefs that you incorporate in your daily life? And I feel like there's three distinctions um, when approaching a business uh, and speaking with them about authenticity because that's going to change my approach. How are we going to approach this? If it's something that's very separate, well, it's just something that pays the bills. It brings in money. You know, the, the, the market's hot in this area right now. It's probably not something that I could help them with. Or as, you know, I often tell them, you know, you're not my client. You're not my customer. Right, right. You you, you just said a, a lot right there, right? Because... When I, when I think about it, I think about business and being authentic. The business is only the vehicle that can get me an outcome or get me a result. Mm. The question is, this vehicle that I'm about to get into, does it help me get to my long-term goal, mm -hmm. right, in, in my life? So I think what a lot of people and a lot of challenge that people have, they need to answer that question. Is the business going to get me closer to what I want to have when you know, it's game over for me, life over. I think in Seven Habits, right, says talks about start with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of business owners miss that part. Is my business going to help me get to my end result when someone's at my funeral and they have words to say about Marco or they have words to say about Will? Is that vehicle the thing that gets me there? And if it doesn't support me to get there, why am I doing it? Right. Yeah. And, and I think that's what gets scary. And people are not authentic because they're just doing it and it doesn't get them to their higher purpose. I guess yeah. the word I want to use. Right. Right. It, it's a big deal. When you have an idea and you want to bring it into the physical realm, so to speak, mm -hmm. it's a big deal when you have an idea and you want to share it with someone else and then ask them for money for what it is that you're sharing. It's scary because there's sometimes, at least for myself, my experiences in business, it's scary because the question comes up, will they want what I have to offer? Is it good enough? And we've spoken in the past uh, in times that we, we were in groups together about this concept of a gremlin, the I'm not good enough concept. And so I think a lot of doubt shows up with, uh, is what I'm offering good enough that someone wants to pay me for it, or at least even wants to hear me out for what I have to offer? And I think we have to actually turn that on its head, right? And say, 
hey, what is the problem I'm going to solve for this person? And then is my service the best service to actually solve that problem? So starting first on the front end of that is, what is this person experiencing or what are clients or customers that similar to me experiencing and what have I created to bring to the marketplace that gives them value? And I think as long as the value that I'm giving them, the use value that they're getting is more than the cash value that they need to pay, then yeah. everyone wins. Yeah. The problem is I think some people go into business and they take money from people but the value that they get is less than the money that they receive. Right. And that's what we run into challenges at of, hey, is the people willing to pay for my service? In the beginning, it's very difficult to find that balance because many times you get conflicting information or conflicting advice from um, business mentors, uh, resources. They tell you, Value your work. You got to get what you're worth. People are going to get used to you being uh, the person that always gives discounts, that never wants to, to that never wants to to um, charge you full price because they're always going to give you a break. But then there's other schools of thought or other advice rather that says to you, "Well, give it away for free." And I think many times for the person that's starting out, that's a little bit of a scary concept and it's difficult to navigate. Do I give a discount because I'm starting out and I want to get them in? But is that going to create a perception that I'm a bargain person, that what I have does not have value? Or do I give it away for free? But what if I run out of ideas? What if I run out of something new to share? Absolutely, right? It's the biggest issue when it comes to pricing. Um, and what you're actually offering the price for the thing that you're actually selling. So let's take it from a service professional standpoint. I think most service professionals actually struggle with that because they determine their price based upon what they think their time is worth, which is a problem. Whenever I actually establish a price of what I think I'm worth, I'm always going to have problems actually selling something. So I really need to actually establish what I'm actually selling based upon the value that the clients get in. And I need to be able to determine that. And that, that's a challenge to do in the very beginning. You got to be able to quantify the value that this client's getting to determine what you should actually price it out as. So segueing from what we're talking about right now, what do you find are the most common mistakes that new business owners make when they're trying to start a business or trying to scale their business? Yeah, I think the, the number one mistake that, that most of them actually make is not really thinking through how much time do I need to invest in this venture, right? So I think they, they fall in love with the idea of entrepreneurship. I think they fall in love with what the outcomes are, but they don't make the commitment of what needs to actually be done to achieve the success that they actually want in their business. And for me, that, that was huge, right? So when I first actually stepped out of entrepreneurship, I failed. I went looking for a job. And the reason why, I was really good at the technical thing that I wanted to sell, but I didn't know anything about business. And I didn't know about talking and having a conversation with a client or a customer that says, hey, let's do business together. So I think a lot of entrepreneurs underestimate what it actually will take to be successful and they actually don't make the commitment long term to say, hey, whatever happens, I'm going to stick through this and push through it when things don't go as I planned that they would. Right. What are your top four tips for entrepreneurs that want to have a thriving business uh, and then you know, a business that's authentic to them? Yeah, I, I think the first one is knowing what you want long term, Right. I got to know if I'm going to start a business, I need to know what I want long term because the business have to provide uh, the vehicle to get me there. So that's number one, know I want long term. And that that's where, you know, coaching could become so important and coaches help you clarify, you know, what you want long term. So first tip is if you can have a conversation with someone on getting clear with that. I know most people says, oh, I know what I want. Really talk to a coach about what you want and get really clear and provide that clarity. So I would say the first thing is, is that clarity. Yeah. 
I think just, you know, a subset on, on the tip on that first one is, you know, answer the question, does going into business, you know, help me achieve that long-term goal? Because I think entrepreneurship is not for everyone. And if I can align what I want and there's another organization out there that I can join to do that and it will still get me what I want, do that rather than entrepreneurship. Right. You know, entrepreneurship shouldn't be you going into this just to do something. Find out if there's some someone else that's doing it that you can align with first. So really getting clear on is entrepreneurship, is starting a business going to get me closer there? Because it's not for everyone. Yep. I think number three is, do you have financial stability? Mm. I think there's a lot of entrepreneurs who fall in love with the idea, but personally, financially, they don't have the means to be able to stick with it, right? So being able to say, hey, if I'm going to go into entrepreneurship, maybe the best thing is for me to have a side hustle until I build enough revenue to be financial stable that I can walk away and do this full time. Right. Right. right? And I think for me, that that was big because when I was actually, you know, working for someone, I was building out a side practice. Yeah. And it was when that side practice, I was stable enough, I can say, okay, I can walk away now. And make sure you're in love with the activities that you're going to have to do to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. And making sure that that's in alignment with your strengths, right? Because a lot of entrepreneurs, there's some work that we have to do. The question is, am I the right person to do those things? And are I'm going to be excited doing what I love? And if I'm not, who do I need to actually surround myself by a team or other people, other partners, other vendors to make sure that it's going to be a successful venture? I think a lot of entrepreneurs don't do that. They just jump into it and says, I'm going to do everything. And I think that's the worst thing that you can do to really right. start a business. Right, right. Yeah. And, and I, I feel it's important for for people to understand. And this is a this is an idea that I first heard in the book, uh, The Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert wow. Kiyosaki. He talks about there's four quadrants, and it's easier to illustrate in the drawing. Uh, but on the left side of the quadrant, if you're facing it, there's uh, E and S. And on yeah. the right side, there's B and I. And the right. E stands for employee. People on the left side of this quadrant, they have to work to make money. So the employee. Now you could move further down the scale into the quadrant, more freedom. The S is self-employed. Self-employed now, you don't necessarily have a boss or you don't have a boss. However, if you don't work, you don't make money. So this is your local deli owner. The guy who's there seven days a week through a snowstorm. Um, I think about the guy at the, at the laundromat, in my neighborhood laundromat, and I see him and I say hello to him. And I know that if he doesn't work, he doesn't necessarily make money. That's his, that's his, that's his hustle. Uh, then you move further down, and then you become uh, the B, which is the business owner. Now, the yeah. business owner, that's when you're officially a business. And the way I've heard it defined is you're officially a business when you don't have to be at work. But the, the work, you don't have to be at your job, but the work still gets done and you're still making money. So when you could take a vacation and you have a system running and you're still making money, then you are officially a business. And then the highest level of the class, cash flow, flow quadrant is the I, which is the investor, where you do nothing and your money just grows and, and your money makes you money. I, I, I love that. Let, let's, let's dig into that a little bit, right? So when I'm the person that's an E and I go to the S, here's the challenge with that, Marco. I am the worst boss to myself. <laughs> because here's something. My boss was smarter than me in some areas when I was an employee. He did it. He was out on his own. He had some experience. I think the challenge is that we think that we're better than our boss in all areas. Mm. And I think technically you might be. But there's some business principles that your boss learned that you usually don't pick up on when you first start. Yeah. And then so when I move into that, you know, going out on my own, not being an employee and being self-employed, man, I got to look in the mirror of someone who doesn't have all the answers and attempt to figure that out. So I can be the worst boss to myself because now there's no one holding me accountable. Yeah. Right. If, if, if I don't want to get up and go to work, Marco, guess what? I work from home. 
Yep. And if I want to sleep to 11 a.m., there's no boss calling me saying, are you coming to work today? Yep. Or You know what I mean? So there's a different animal that begins to play out going from that E to S. Yeah. Discipline. Discipline is key in that moment. If you do not have discipline, you will fail. I totally, totally agree. You know, I, I do think there is some educational moments that I'm learning when I'm actually failing. But some people do get off the bus. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's the failure when, and I'll speak personally of myself, you know, my first round out in entrepreneurship, I failed. Why did I fail? I failed because when I went out and started a business, I fell in love with the idea. I wasn't financially stable and I didn't know how to get the next client. So what did that cause me to do? I went from the E to the S and went back to the E because mm -hmm. I need to go get a job because I wasn't supporting my family. Yeah. The truth is... When I stepped out, I wasn't being a thinker to myself and really beginning to understand what I didn't know. Right. And I think that happens a lot with people in entrepreneurship. We don't know what we don't know. And instead of getting support that we need to be successful, we throw in the towel and quit and go back to what we know, which is being an employee. I think it's important to recognize to acknowledge that more people than we realize want to start their own business. Absolutely. And it's their commitment to their family, to mm -hmm. the people that matter to them, that cause them to either let go of that desire, that dream, that calling, which is even bigger than all of the other ones, because they want to be present for those that matter most to them. And I think it's these people that have probably some of the greatest ideas, some of the greatest contributions to humanity within them. But there's an immense challenge in making that transition. Marco, my goodness, right? So, so think about this. Let's paint a picture for a second. This person that you talk about that has this idea, it can be the best idea. It can be the most brilliant. It can be life-changing to the world, let's just say. But when I actually go home for the people that I love, my wife is thinking about our financial stability. And she's in my ear like, you need to get a job. Marco, you need to go and get a job. This idea of entrepreneurship that you have, throw in a towel. One, she doesn't see the vision that you have in your head, Right. It is this dream. It's this thing that you could have saw, right? You could envision, you could have saw it, but she's not actually locked in. Mm -hmm. And that's conflict. So now when I go home every day, my wife is telling me to get a job, I'm in conflict. Yeah. Where do I go? And, and I think you were saying this earlier, you know, who's the people that's really in your ear? Yeah, yeah. And, and if I could, you know, be able to put myself in a community that will support me to help me in the, the this incubation stage that I'm at, to grow that idea, then I can possibly be more um, be more successful on this venture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's it's not an easy decision. And and I think that the biggest struggle that people go through is going to be, and I know that I went through it, is is this right? This concept of right and wrong. For myself, I definitely know I want to be a present father. I have two kids. I want to be there for them. And 99% of the time, I don't put my work in front of anything that they need. Right. There's that 1% where it's, hold on, I'm in the middle of something. You got to give me some time. I'm very open with them. I'm very transparent with them about my short-term and my long-term goals. Mm -hmm. They know that I have my day job and then they know that I have my coaching and my coaching is, and I've described to them the vision, how it could help others, how it's something that's authentic to myself, how it's something that it's not a money-driven uh, endeavor. It's a calling. It's something that I'm here to do. And sometimes I find in my conversations with other people, they're not as open with their loved ones as to what they're doing and how it's so much more meaningful than just, I want to try something new. Is something more meaningful than I'm trying to make some money. A lot of times, and I'll, you know, I speak for myself, it's something that is very, very personal, very ingrained in, in, 
in their existence, you know, in my existence, in my example. Um, but it's not an easy decision when you have to start saying no to those people that are closest to you. And sometimes you get some heat for it and it's not easy and you start to doubt yourself and your decisions in moving forward with these uh with a business endeavor hopefully if you know well, you're one of the lucky ones you'll have people around you that support you and they'll encourage you and they'll give you your space and your time which is really what you need um encouragement comes easy i find a lot of people can encourage you whether you know them or not just turn on youtube and you know you know click on youtube and find some inspirational videos you'll get the encouragement there um, but I think that when people are close to you, for them to give you your time and your space, that is the biggest gift. And for family oriented people, I think that they're also, when you get that time and space and when you're trying to build something, it also comes with a decent dose of guilt. Spot, spot on. I, I'll, I'll just add on to you. I think that is the part of having an authentic relationship, right, with your family members. And I think what tends to happen, there's not enough sharing. Like, kudos to you that you share this with your family, what the vision is. Most entrepreneurs don't, right? And what they're actually creating is tension because now their family technically op could operate as their accountability partners, right? Most entrepreneurs say things, Marco, and then like you're saying that, they don't have the discipline. So I say that I want this thing, but then your wife or your kids see you sleeping and you said you're going to be working on this thing and you get pissed off at them when they call you on it. Mm -hmm. But that is a form of them being supportive. But we don't mm -hmm. see that part of supportive when your wife says, go get a job because you're really not doing this thing because you're not disciplined. So we got to take both ends of it. We just can't take it from the entrepreneur because a lot of entrepreneurs says, oh, people don't support me, Marco. That's why I can't make it. No. Are you doing what you need to do to get the results that you need to get to? And are you being authentic with your family? What are some things people can look out for as indicators to let them know that starting a business is something that would be authentic to them versus just something to generate some money? It's a great question, and let me let me start by saying this. I don't think there's anything wrong with starting a business for money. I think it goes wrong when people start businesses to rip other people off. Mm. So let me be careful how I tread this, right? right? If I have something that's of value, right, it may not technically be my higher purpose, but if I'm exchanging with you and the value that you pay me, which is five bucks, and you get $20 of value, I think that's okay if I'm making money, right? I may not be doing something um, that I'm called to do, but I think that's okay. I think the problem comes in when I'm taking, Mark, $100 from you and you're only getting $5 of value, uh, yeah. right? That's where, that's where it becomes a problem because I think also in business – you evolve, mm -hmm. right? And as I go down this road of actually building a business, I begin to see a higher purpose that I think you don't see until you look back and reflect. Because I think the, the entrepreneur journey brings you down a pathway that you can begin to understand what your purpose is if you're paying attention to the journey. Right. And I, I, I say that from the extent, like when I first stepped out to start my business, you know, I just wanted to make some money, <laughs> yeah. right? I say, hey, you know what? Let me let me go into business and let me do work. I'm doing tax return work. You know, people are getting value. They're getting their taxes done, which, which was good at that point in time. But now the place where I'm really at, you know, it's about changing people's lives. Yeah. And I believe entrepreneurship can actually do that because what? I've seen where I've come from to where I'm at now and the freedom that entrepreneurship provides that I'm like, ha, got it. I need to help people build a business so that they can change their lives and support their loved ones and leave a legacy for them. Now, that wasn't the vision when I first started, but I think when you begin to step out and you take steps, you begin to get new clues 
that point you into the right direction where you need to actually go. Yeah, yeah, very true. Are there any wrong reasons that you find that people go into business? <sighs> wrong reasons. Um, I, I think the wrong reasons that people start business is that I'm pissed off at my boss and I want to actually start a business to get back at him. Uh, competing. Um, I, right, I'm, I'm competing, right? Or, or is that, you know, I'm going to business because someone told me that I couldn't make it. So I'm going to prove them wrong. I think it just comes with the wrong energy of yeah. that you're trying to compete. You're trying to prove something. And like, what do you have to prove to anybody? Yeah. You know what I mean? We're, we're all human. So I think when we look at it from, from that standpoint, that's probably the wrong reason I could think about why people should really stay away from business. Hey, if your boss is pissing you off and you guys are just not getting along, maybe there's another job that you can go to. Right, right. Right? To get to get what you want. But I wouldn't start a business just because you hate going to work. Yeah. Find an opportunity that you enjoy doing. Right. And it, it's important to understand, you know, well, the first point, the, what I was going to make is that, um, you know, I think the second example you gave about, you know, if someone tells you you can't do it and you want to do it, I think that that can serve as some positive motivation. But mm -hmm. if that's your sole purpose is just to, you're going to put your time and energy just to proving someone wrong, that's wrong. It can serve as some good motivation in the beginning, at least. Um, and hopefully then it triggers that you're now trying to prove something to yourself, uh, that it's something that you want. But I think understanding the wrong reasons and really going down this, this road to starting a business is important because there's a lot of, if you want it done the right way, and you tell me if you agree or not, there's a lot of steps that you have to do which are very important. You have to get a tax ID number or EIN number, and these are things where essentially you're creating a whole new entity. You're creating a new being. Um, and if you decide, hey, I don't want to do this anymore, you can't just walk away and stop doing it. You have to dissolve the corporation. You have to establish separate bank accounts. So you can't use your personal credit card to start buying your business stuff. You wanna completely separate these two things. Um, your income taxes have to be created separately. Uh, there are differences in corporate structure. So you have your C Corps and your S Corps and your LLCs and your PCs. Um, and these are things where if you're really serious about it, you wanna incorporate a couple of professionals. You wanna make sure that you have an accountant who's familiar with dealing with business um, uh, income taxes and tax law. Uh, you want to consult with an attorney. Uh, one of the resources that I found, what I used to start out, was the SBA, the Small yes. Business Association. This is a federally funded, um, uh, I'll call it a consulting service uh, offered by the federal government. They have offices everywhere. Just go to sba.gov and uh, it's a good starting point. I went to a couple of counseling sessions uh, coaching sessions in the beginning. I'll be honest, they were <laughs> not the best experience. They were not the best experience. Uh, I'd say w one time, I went about, I think I went about three times. And, and in, the, the, in this one occasion, the advice I got from this guy was, open up a new credit card. I said, okay, not bad. He says, okay. And then when it's... Uh, you're going to get interest free for a year. He's like, just buy everything there. When you're about to close, you know, you're about to lose your interest free. Open another credit card and transfer your balance. He's like, and open a credit card and transfer. It. He's like, you keep doing this. Like, you'll never pay interest. And it didn't sound like it, it didn't come across as sound advice. And he says to me, um, he's like, trust me. He's like, uh, he's like, I filed for bankruptcy three times, you know, and I've been able to, you know, keep my home and my car. And I was like, okay, I, I, I ha it's time for me to go. But thank you for the, thank you for the, the, the lesson and the advice. When you say that, what comes to me, right? Because that's all about the relationships that you have, and that's what's really important in business. Who are your relationships? Who, who are the people that you are going to for advice? Um, and it, it, it just seems like you knew, right, which was great that this guy, what he's telling me, I'm not, I'm not listening to this advice, but a lot of entrepreneurs, so because they're so green, that's one of the challenges, like they don't know who to listen to. So if someone just has a title and says, Hey, you know what? I'm a business advisor. I can advise you. Uh, the question they need to really ask is this person, right? Being authentic with me. <laughs> And, and what will this person tell me when this is out of my league and I don't know the answer to this? 
right, Marco, there's questions that, you know, I come across when I'm when I'm dealing with prospects or dealing with clients that I just don't know. So for me to be not authentic and attempt to give you an answer with something that's not in my wheelhouse just really damages the relationship. And I think that's what tends to make a lot of entrepreneurs fail. I think for some people, it's very difficult to ask for help uh, and they feel that they have to figure it all out. Uh, I think that social media has a lot of positive things it can help us with when used in, in some ways, uh, but it can also create this facade that people have it all together. Um, I watch a lot of these kids' movies because you know my daughter's young, and so we watched a movie recently called Ron's Gone Wrong. Uh, it's a funny movie. It's a funny movie, but it, it, there's there's a deeper message in that. And I remember this one scene where there was a, a, a young girl and she was known as the social media girl in, in school. She had like most followers. And in this one scene in the movie, they actually have like a, a camera which is watching her. And when she posted a, a photo of her and all the sneakers of all of her friends, you know, having a good time at a party, she actually was alone in her room crying and she just set up a bunch of sneakers but framed the shot to make it look as though she was at a party with a lot of people. And I think that that one scene is provides a lesson and, and, and a reminder that uh, not all that glitters is gold, uh, not all entrepreneurs that you see on social media with the, the cars. And, you know, there's so many ads on, especially on Instagram, there's so many ads when you're scrolling of, there's always someone sitting standing on a balcony of a hotel you know, talking about how, you know, my system, if you want to just, you know, we, we, you know, we could scale you to $50,000 a month and, and or, or there's someone in front of a house or a pool and they got a Lamborghini in the back. I was speaking with someone who's a very successful uh, businessman and he was telling me that he knows a couple of these people who use that as their strategy and they're just right out of the box with no, with no clientele. Uh, they rent all of that. They rent the house for the day. They rent the exotic car for the for a couple of hours. Um, so I, I think it's just important to to mention that and to remind people who might be thinking of starting a business and who may feel discouraged that one they can't compete with people because they're not at that level, and two they feel compelled to inundate themselves with education. Training courses in excess is a procrastination and a stalling tactic. Uh, so I think that sometimes jumping in there uh, when you're not ready, I would even say not even sometimes, probably more often than not, jumping in there when you're not ready is uh, better advice than I, I need to prepare, I need to prepare. You, you, you just said a whole lot. First, let's, let's dig into you know the hip-hop videos, Yeah. right? Because the hip hop videos back in the days, I don't I don't listen to hip hop now, but old school hip hop Marco was my thing. Yeah. But when you watch these videos, everything was usually rented. The yeah. chains that they had on, yeah. right? The diamonds that they were showing. And to the outside, it's like, wow, I want to get that. That's what success means. And I think that's what we have now with social media, right? I can go and rent my outfits and look successful, but am I really successful? I think a lot of entrepreneurs get caught up with the shiny object, mm -hmm. right? And what they can see. But I don't think that's what success is. I think people have to look back and say, what is that really, what, I, what is it that I really want? And am I getting closer to it? And social media is a, a big issue. And then on your second point that you just hit on, um, Marco, just in terms of execution, right? I could take every course, read every book, and have the head knowledge to do it. But I think the best education is going through these courses, going through these books and executing at the same time. Because now I'm actually really creating that and not waiting like, oh, I'm gonna start this when the book is, when I finish this book. How about start it while you're going through the book and the practical tips that you're getting, executing those things now. I think that gives the most value. Right, right. And I find it interesting that people call their business their baby because when you oh, have a... Oh, man, Marco, wait, stop, hold on. <laughs> when you oh, have a baby, baby, when you have a baby, you are never 100% ready. You could read all the parenting books you want. 
You ain't never going to be ready. You could get advice from your elders. I got advice from parents, from grandparents, from friends with kids who had babies before me. And when you have a baby, man, let me tell you, it's a whole other ball game. <laughs> yeah. And, and when you think about it, right, that that baby that you have, Marco, and the baby that I have, we actually treat them differently. We don't actually treat them the same. And we raise them with diff- we can raise them with different values too. Exactly, we raise them with different values, but then we go to look to gurus and says that this is the way that it's supposed to be. That's not authentic. Yeah. Right? If if I'm really raising this baby, I need to raise them based upon who the child is. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs mm. miss that. They're trying to raise mm-hmm. their baby based upon the way your business is, Marco. Yeah. Or the guy on social media. But if I'm really going to raise a baby, which is custom to me, then I got to really think about what I'm good at, how I operate, what's best for me and not what's best for your baby. I would love to parent your baby, Marco. It's easy. <laughs> to parent your I baby would... is very easy. I can tell you all day what to do, Marco. Marco, why'd you let your kid stay up to nine o'clock at night? Marco, why'd you <laughs> let your kid go to school with those clothes on? It's easy for me from the sidelines to yeah. tell you to do with your baby. But when it comes to my baby, the stuff I'm telling you, Marco, is very hard for me to implement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel we could expand that baby analogy a lot more. (laughs) (laughs) Because the the baby, the baby, when you think about the the baby, right? And because I I love what you said about that, is that some people, right, they want to be the overprotective parent with the baby. Oh. And they don't want to let the baby go as the baby grows. Right, right. Right? So the baby now wants to go to the club, Marco, and you're against the mashy party. So you'll be overprotective. Like, you're not going anywhere. You're going to stay in this house and stay in this room. But when I hold on to everything in my business, it really can't grow. Yep, yep. So if you don't let that child go out to experience life for themselves, they can't expand you. And it's the same thing with your business. Right. When I'm holding on so tight, it means that I'm really not allowing the other people that's connected to me to this business so that I can actually grow and develop and go to another level. Right. Because right. I'm still treating them as I need to give them milk. Yeah. Yeah. The business equivalent to that is having difficulty with delegation, with hiring help. There's the whole concept of if I don't do it myself, it's never going to get done right. It may get done differently, but is different wrong? Right. Is 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 different wrong? And I think entrepreneurs are looking for a straight, narrow way. This is how you do it and don't actually make any changes. That That's what really entrepreneurs want who said they want to come to somebody. And this is funny, Marco. They want to come to me and say, just give me the plan that's going to work. Really? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> really? I, I can give you the plan if you were exactly like me mm-hmm. and you had the same gifts I had, if you had the same values that I have. Yes, I can give you that plan because all you're going to be is a duplicate of me. You're not going to be as good because I don't think you're ever going to be the same as me, meaning you are always going to be different. Right. And I think that's the challenge. Entrepreneurs want something that says, hey, something in a box. Give yeah. me a business in a box that I can operate. And I yeah. think that's good for franchises. But if you build in something from scratch, it's a total different world. Yeah, yeah. And for people of faith, they can relate to that as well because there's this idea of asking God or the universe for something. Just tell me what you want me to do. I know I've prayed that many, many, many a time. Just tell me what you want me to do. Come to me in a dream. And then I wake up, you know, every single night for a month like I haven't dreamt in a month. You know, I close my eyes and I'm awake. But I think it's the same concept, you know, when you look at it from, uh, you know, from a person of faith where it's like, yeah, you know, just tell me what to do. And, you know, I think that the higher power tells us, you know, I'm not telling you how to do anything. Just follow the journey. Just know that I'm there with you, you know, along the along the path, along the way. You're messing with people right now because there's so <laughs> many people that might listen to this podcast and say, I'm still waiting for a sign. Mm. And that sign is probably not going to come. Yeah. I love the I love the the sign is this podcast. If you're hearing this, this is the sign. That's it. (laughs) This is the sign. Because I think a lot of people are waiting for, I want to use this word correctly, confirmation. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for a confirmation or for someone that says, This is your calling. 
Mm-hmm. I saw it in a dream and God spoke to me. I know this is the way I'm going to go. And I want to say this. Some people do get that. Yeah. But for most of us, we don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's 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 a critical line, but I I don't think we should actually wait for a sign. Yeah. I think we should make progress and look at the feedback that we're getting and make adjustments. Yeah, it's not faith if you know the outcome. <sighs> Come on, Marco, stop messing with these people, man. It, you, you you you're so right. It, it's not faith, but we don't want to be in faith. But yeah. we want to we want we want to say that oh we have it. Will Clanton, man, got into some stuff today. Man, yes. this is this is good stuff, man. <laughs> and you know, the ultimate goal for myself, uh, my intention with this podcast, is to uh, inspire people to take action on the ideas that they have, to understand that their authentic selves, their unique qualities and traits, their secret sauce, is exactly what they need in order to live their happiest version of their life, and also to give people new perspectives that there's. Um, businesses that can be made out there. There's uh, hobbies that can be pursued. There's um, passions that should be realized and made into to, to reality. Um, and it doesn't have to be one thing, you know. And that's one of the things that I struggled with in the beginning with sharing this concept of authenticity because I couldn't find one way to continue to present it. And it was so simple, but I could not see it until later that It's in the different facets, the different manifestations of authenticity that you will find that common thread and that we are all in the same journey, having different experiences yet in the same place. Um, So that's always been the goal with with the podcast. And I think that this conversation uh, and all the information that you shared and your insights, I think it definitely is going to serve to to inspire some people. And for those people who are waiting for the sign, like I said, this is that sign. Just just pull the trigger. Just go and uh, pursue your dreams. And it's never going to come out right, right the first time. And um, whoever's listening to this or watching this, you have no idea the mistakes that we made during this recording, which I had edited out. <laughs> <laughs> right. It you, is you, our you, secret. <laughs> right. <laughs> which, is, which is life, right? We yeah. wish that we could edit the other stuff, but... Who cares, right? Yeah. Just move forward, make progress. You're gonna make mistakes, right? Like when you were riding your bike when you were younger, you fell off the first few times. What'd you do? You wouldn't, hopefully you didn't get the alcohol, right? Yeah. Hopefully it was peroxide that you got. Put some peroxide on that, you put a Band-Aid, and you got back on that bike. Yeah. And well, I'm I Latino, man. We used, to, we used to use something called Mercurio, man. We used to use Mercurochrome, that orange thing. Oh, yeah. My yes. God, my, my father used to bust that out. It was in, always in a brown bottle with no label on it and the sticky cap on there. And after a while, I just believed in like, oh, I got to cut. Let me get the Mercurio. And so you grab and just rub it on there. You know, still, I, Listen, man, I've been practicing medicine for going on 16 years. I still don't know what's in that thing. Never bothered to look it up, man. <laughs> Right, right. You just you just throw it on there because that's, that's what you it. Want. That's it, man. I don't even know where to find it. I don't even know if they still make it. Who knows if that was toxic? We did a lot of toxic stuff. You know, I had a lot of toxic remedies back then. Right. Um, Will, how can people follow you? How can they get in contact with you if they want some uh, business coaching, business consulting, uh, tax advice, anything relating to what we discussed? How can they reach out to you? How can they find you? Yeah, just just go to my website. It's Will Clanton. My name W I L L C L A N T O N dot com. Uh, my that's my website. There you can find everything you need right there. Awesome, brother. Thank you so much for taking the time to to speak with me to share your thoughts with all of us, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again in the future and getting a, a, another conversation going. I'm sure that in a couple of years we're gonna have more to talk about. Marco, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.